Hi. I need my clapper. Clapper, clacker, whatever. The one and only DVD, always take one, Photoshop, whatever. One, two, three. Boom. Okay, so hey, tonight, or whatever time of day it is for you, we're going to dive into a little bit of, not necessarily directly editing with Photoshop, but manipulating layers between multiple files, moving things around, shifting kind of your uh, aspect ratio if you need to change something in a document, maybe for a printer, all kinds of fun little tweaks and tricks and things you can do in Photoshop to adjust your files however you need to. So let's see what this does. hurt um to start with what we've got here is uh one of my recent dance composite images it's pretty cool i like it um many of you have probably seen this the comment on it all kinds of different things but i want to take this and make a movie poster out of it so let's do that now, here's the deal. Movie posters typically are portrait format, so vertical, not horizontal like this. Guess what? I have a template. This right here. It's a pre-built little standard aspect ratio poster size movie poster template. Um, not ready to actually put that out into the world yet, but it's coming. So, what's on here? Okay, there's text and these little light flares and whatever. But how do you work back and forth between that? Now, what you can see is I've got both files open up here as tabs in Photoshop. And there's multiple ways of doing that kind of thing. So, if I have just a folder full of files, um, you can click and drag something into this little gray area up here next to the tabs and it will open that image as a new tab if you just click and drag it on top of this it will drop it into that file so right there it shows up in the middle of my movie poster template i don't want that um but basically what i did when i started was i opened up this original image with all the layers. And again, this is one of the reasons why I always save fully layered versions of all of my files, because I never know when I'm going to want to go back and do something else crazy with it, like make a movie poster. And while you can take this and just drop it into the template as a flat image and make some things happen, there's some things I want to show you about if you still have the original masked layer of your subject this will help you do some fun little things so what we're gonna do um, first off let me show you if you don't have tabs available in Photoshop or you want to understand what might be going on there if you go to edit preferences and workspace there are two options here which are open documents as tabs and enable floating document window docking. Now, that last one is a little bit like, what? what's that mean? Let me show you. If you have both those checked and turned on, you can take this image, if you come up to its tab and just click on that and drag it down and it will make a floating window inside of Photoshop. And if you use the zoom keys, control, minus or command minus on a Mac and plus you can zoom in and out and it will size that up and down to where you can see the other image you've got back behind it. And you can, you know, do this on as many images you want have them out floating around, whatever. 
I'm just going to leave it with the one. And if you saw what I just did right there, this one, if you drag it up until you see this blue highlight around the frame and then release, it puts it into the tab inside of Photoshop and it's no longer a floating window. It's just part of the main window, but it's on this tab. So that's kind of some little things you can use to go back and forth between different files. If you have a bunch of files open and you want to copy layers back and forth, you can have one here, one back here. And as you click, it brings whichever one up to the main forefront. And those are the layers that you see. So if I click on this one, I see the layers of the movie poster template. If I click on this one, it will show me all the layers of that composite. So let's set this back up how I had it. So the movie poster template is my main document window and I've got the composite floating on its own window above that. Now what I want to do with this is I do want to have an entire flattened version of that image but I also want to have this background copy that's got the layer mask of her in it. So, um, how I do that is I'm going to come up here to the very top and create a new layer and then hit the four keystroke command for stamp all visible layers into this new layer. So that is control alt shift and E or command option shift E on a Mac. You do that and now you have one single layer up here that is your image flattened. Now I said I also want this one to select both of those layers. You just want to have one of them selected and then use control or command and click on that other layer. So you have those two layers selected. Don't click on the thumbnail because then you'll make a selection which you don't want. You want to click on the gray area or the name of the layer with the control or command key held down. And you can, you know, select many, as many layers as you want. If you want to take more than, eh, yeah, I'm clicking too fast. If you want to take more than one layer across, you can select as many as you need. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use those two layers. And you want your move tool selected. And you can just click and drag it over here and it drops it in on top. Now, here's one extra little trick to that. It just dropped it wherever I dragged and released my mouse. So if I undo that. If you hold down the shift key before you click and drag this over, it will center it and place it in the middle of that document. So. That's just a nice little feature sometimes if you're not, if you want to have some kind of a precise placement of those layers into the new document window, um, holding that shift key will center it up for you. Okay. So now that I've got those two in here, I can actually either just close this or just drag it up here into its own tab and then come back over to the main image that I'm going to be working on inside of this movie, movie poster template up to you and your machine if you don't have a whole lot of ram or anything else and you want to free up that you can close that one down but this is fine for now so these are both still selected and now they're up on the top of everything i want to actually just drag those down to the very bottom you can see it highlights in blue where this is going to end up in between layers so i want it all the way at the bottom so you can see it places it down behind the text and there's this fun little flares and everything else. Okay. Now I want to keep both of them still selected because I'm going to scale them up. If you don't, if you scale one of them up separately, you're going to lose the connection of this layer mask to your main image. So anytime when you're doing something like this, that you're manipulating couple of the layers from the original image you want to make sure they're both selected before you transform or move them around assuming you want to maintain that relationship so control T or command T is the transform window you can also go edit transform 
and you pick any of those things scale whatever but I'm just going to bring that up and bring this one down maybe go just a little bit over to make sure I have the edges completely filled and say okay and it'll think a little bit and I'm going to move this around a little bit maybe bring it up yeah there okay so I like the way that looks okay now we've got this text and that's this storm rising right now and there are a few little flares that are connected to that there's some flares up here um, the fun thing about this is those flares are on a layer with a glow effect already placed on them so um, if you use a paintbrush with whatever color on here it put a little star of yellow but it's got this same blue glow around it from the layer effect all right so I don't really want that I'm actually just going to turn that off for now until I figure out what I want to do with the text because I honestly haven't thought about what I want to title this we'll figure that out okay so I want to move this text up I don't want it right there but I kind of think I want to have it hiding partially behind the fabric you know why not so how do we do that well you have this is why I copied the original subject mask because you can drag that mask up to the layer with the text now keep in mind we're going to also have to invert the mask because we want this to look like the text is behind it not inside of that subject okay so to move that mask up you need to hold down the alt key or option key on a Mac so push down that alt key alt, option key whatever your system needs and then just click on the mask and drag it up and drop it on the storm rising text now you can see it's inside of our fabric up here I don't want that so I'm just going to select the mask again and then hit control I to invert it or command I one more little fun thing because maybe I don't like where I positioned that if you just click and drag it you can see it's got that cut out of it so undo that this little chain link here between the text icon and the mask icon if you click and break that now if you click on the text you can move it around and it will continue to be behind your subject visually it's masked out of your subject so you can position that however you want and yeah you can see there's a little bit of a, a wonky effect right there because I did hair on another layer it's not a part of the mask so that might be a little bit of something to contend with but it looks pretty good most of the way through all of this so we're just gonna put it back up here somewhere and come up with uh, come up with something to call this what do you think I don't know man I'm, I'm, I'm my creativity's kind of burnt out after this week um, now I'm stuck give me a minute I'll think of something well, okay, I'm just going to go with the actual name of the dance company's things. It was Relevations. I don't know if any of you saw that, but that was something kind of cool. So there we go. And that's not Aiden. This is Sarah Butts. All right. Now there's a text field down here that has a little bit more producer all that kind of thing I don't really feel like editing all of that but you get the idea if you want this text to be eh, for instance white you can just highlight all of the text come up here and select white and there you go I didn't get the uh, 
P at the front. Producer, David Van Diemen, blah, blah, blah. That's great. We're not going to mess with that. June 2019. I do want to see... Man, this is it's dark. I can't see it. There we go. Bring that up. June 2019. We're going to say this is 2021 now. 21. There we go. And I think this was in September. Sure, why not? All right. You know what? I don't want that either. For this purpose, I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, now we've got these little flares. Now, I actually have a bunch of flare brushes um, that are not necessarily mine to give away, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I like that. I'm just going to... Maybe, there we go, on the E and the O. Put it like that. So, there you go. With the layers that are going to be in the template, I'll keep some of those on there. Um, I may make a few individual layers with separate flares so you can move them around without having to use the brushes that I've got. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I haven't decided exactly how to do all that part of it yet. But I like this. All right, that looks... That looks pretty darn good. Now, this is a standard movie poster size, like I mentioned. But what if you actually want to make it, say, an 8x10, which this is a lot taller than that? Okay. You can use the crop tool. And in these boxes up here, you can actually enter whatever ratio you want. So, just type in 8x10. And... It will, whoops, I don't want to actually say okay yet. That, that's what you need. You want this preview box like this, and it will come inside of the border of your image. But I want to make sure that we have everything, so I'm just going to click and drag that up until it'll kind of snap to place on the edge. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Usually it does being difficult but adjust that until you get kind of the look you want and then say okay now it is sized to an 8 by 10 size and you could send that off to a printer to be an 8 by 10 now the tricky part to that is if you want to go the other direction with it say you've got a vertical image but you want it to be more horizontal You'll need to either use content to wear fill or scale up some elements in the background or do some other things to get that to fit, but it can still be done. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to keep it as it was originally, but I wanted to show you real quick how you can use the crop tool to kind of redo um, the aspect ratio of some things if you want to make it a different size. So pretty happy with how that turned out. So I am just going to save that as something different. I don't want to save it as my movie poster template because that's not what it is. Uh, where is my desktop? Where is my desktop? There it is. All right. I'm just going to say Relevations Poster. Okay. Cool. I think that's good. All right. I hope that gives you some ideas on playing with different uh, files, different layers, moving them around between files. Um, I do this a lot, especially with some of the color grading things. If I've got a color tone layer inside of Photoshop that I really like what it's doing to one photo, but I don't want to have to kind of recreate that each time, I'll leave that file open. And then as I edit through the rest of the images from that set or that I want to apply that to, I'll just click that, drag it across, 
and let it go. Now, if you've done a layer mask, you'll have to redo that to the specific elements that are in the new photo that you're working on. Um, but it's a really powerful way of making edits across multiple files without having to redo everything. So hope that helps. Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.